والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم السلام عليكم and welcome to this episode of the beauties of Islam I'm your host Yusuf Estes And for the next little while, I'd like to talk about one of the beauties of Islam that I found amazing. When I came into Islam, I had this misconception about something called equality. We constantly hear about people talking about equal rights and the equality of men and women, the equality of this and that and so on. But when we look to Islam, we find something amazing, something better than equality. Yeah. Now, I know you're probably thinking, wait a minute, what is he talking about? How can you have something better than equal? Well, the first thing to consider is this. A man and a woman are not really equal. They're different. If they weren't different, why would we have two separate names for these two groups? So obviously there's a difference. It doesn't mean one's better than the other one. It means they're different. So Islam is providing for us something better than equality. And that's what our program is going to be about today. We're going to talk about this beauty of Islam, this something better than equality. I want to call your attention to something that is well known and well established. For the most part, most men are larger, bigger, stronger physically than most women. Occasionally there will be an exception to the rule, but it's known and established that that's the way it is. And since the time of Adam... Peace be upon him. And until now, we find that even the expressions we use in our language describe that. We call the women the fairer sex. Meaning what? Obviously, we're showing that the women have something different than men. And how do we deal with that in Islam? And this is one of the beauties that really got me excited. And I began to understand something on a much deeper level. The word we want to use is not equality. It's equity. Equity means ownership in something or the value of something for you. And what is the value for you or I when we start to talk about this subject of men versus women? If you said, well, I want everything to be the same for the men as it is for the women, what would happen? A lot of people will tell you this is a good thing. They want the same pay structure for a man as they do for a woman. By the way, I don't have a problem with that. I think that's a great idea. Women, if they do the same job, need to have proper compensation. And there's no doubt. And as far as being treated properly, there's no doubt about that either. This is something Islam guarantees. But there are other things that you have to look beyond just a few basic needs or wants and see what's the total picture. The one who created us in the first place, we call him Allah, you might call him God. The point is, he's the creator and the sustainer of the universe. He, more than anyone else, should know what he created. And he should be the one responsible to tell us how to deal with his creation. We find, even in the remnants of what still exists from the old scriptures and manuscripts, reference to this subject. Unfortunately, we don't have the originals for those anymore. So, occasionally, people have got their own little hands in there, and you can't exactly say, this is from God and this is from man. What's inspired by God? What's inspired by man? And what's the inspired word of God to man, etc., etc.? So, when we look to the Quran, we have something great. What is it? It is the exact words, the exact speech of Allah in His last and final revelation to mankind. Now, if you're not Muslim... Or if you're talking to somebody that's not Muslim, they're going to say, well, I reject that immediately. I don't want to accept it. But stop and think. This is what the Muslims are talking about. So at least let's understand where they're coming from with this concept that they have. According to the Muslims, and according to Muhammad, peace be upon him, the speech from Allah is exactly today as it was when it first came to him in the beginning. And in that speech, Allah taught all of us how to deal with each other in many levels, in many ways. And above all, he says in his speech how much he hates and forbids oppression or the dhulm. So for sure we're going to see right away that whether you call it equity or equality, Allah is saying that he's against the thing that we're all against, which is what? 
oppression. Aggression and oppression, that which puts down or the wrongdoing. Okay, now, let's consider the condition of a woman. Is a woman really like a man? A woman can have a baby and a man can't. For this reason alone, we should observe and pay close attention to the needs of the woman. We should pay close attention to the suffering and the condition that she's in when she's going to have a baby, while she's having the baby, and after she has the baby. Why? Because this is something amazing. A man can never, in his wildest imagination, even guesstimate the amount of pain and suffering that a woman goes through, even through one birth pain. I recall <laughs> when my wife was having a child, a little girl, many, many years ago, and my wife grabbed my hand while she was having one of the, what they call contraction. This is a big pain that a woman has when she's delivering the baby. She grabbed my hand and she began to squeeze and press until my hand felt like it was going to break. And I was like, oh, my God. Later, I asked her about that. I said, what, what was this squeezing you did on my hand? It hurt so bad. You know, you almost broke my fingers. She said, oh, you can't imagine the pain. I said, well, give me some idea. She said, a man will never understand this pain. I said, well, any kind of an idea. She said, first, take your lower lip. I said, okay, like this? Yeah. She said, now pull it up over the top of your head. I said, what? She said, and even then you wouldn't begin to understand the pain. So we see there's something different here, something very different between a man and a woman. I want to take a break and let you reflect on what I just said. I want you to think about this because when we come back, with more beauties of Islam, I want to go into this and show you the difference between what we call equality and equity. Sit right there. Don't go away. We're going to be right back with more beauties of Islam. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. <laughs> back, you're watching our program called Beauties of Islam. What we were talking about is the difference between something called equality and something called equity. And we've already discovered that a woman and a man are different. Now, anybody that studied biology knows that. But a funny thing happened one time. I was in India and a doctor came to me and he said, I'm not a Muslim and I like a lot of the things that I've read about Islam, especially when he talks about the miracles found in the Quran and the science that's there in Islam. 1400 years ago, people couldn't have known those things. Many things, the idea that God is one and he's very sold on Islam. He said, except one thing. I said, what is that? He said, the way that Islam is treating a woman different than a man. I said, you're a doctor? He said, yes. I said, PhD or medical? He said, no, I'm a medical doctor. I said, and you don't know the difference between a man and a woman. <laughs> and he started laughing. And we were kidding around, you know. And I said, no, seriously, there's a difference between men and women. He said, absolutely. I said, and do you prescribe exactly the same treatment or medication for a patient that's a woman that is, and a man? He said, well, in some cases you can, but not in all cases. Because, and he started to explain why. And I said, hold on. That's my point exactly. In some cases, you can see easily that the man and the woman are on equal footing. But in other cases, they're not. And this is when you have to go to what we call equity, meaning to give what's properly due for the individual or the group, which is not the same as for the other individuals or group. Let me explain. And I began to talk to him about the differences that Islam is offering for men and women. The first thing and foremost in Islam 
that every Muslim has to do is to declare what's called shahada. We say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness in open testimony that there's no God or deity to worship except the real God. And I bear witness that Muhammad brought this message. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God. And I'm going to do my best to follow him. This is the meaning. And this is the same for men and women. The same. There's no difference. Immediately after a person does this thing called shahada, the next thing they're responsible for is something called salawat al khams. Five times a day to establish their prayers. To stand, bow, prostrate, and sit. And do this repetition five times a day. This is a form of ibadah or worship in Islam. Yes? Yes. I said, now, every Muslim has to do this how many times a day? Five. How many days a week? Seven. How many days a month? Thirty. Uh, 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 uh. Wait a minute. Not women. He said, why? I said, during her monthly cycle, her menstruation cycle, which could be seven, eight, or Ten days, how many days it is, she's forbidden to do her salah or worship at that time. Why? Well, because Allah has ordered it so. He does not want her to do that. Do you imagine that the woman is in pain and suffering? So Allah doesn't want her distracted in the salah like this. And he allows her just to keep Allah in her mind by doing what's called dhikr, remembering Allah, reciting Quran to herself. But she doesn't do the salah and she doesn't make it up. He said, oh, I didn't think of that. So wait a minute, there's a lot of things you and I won't think about because we didn't create human beings. He said, you're right. I said, okay, next. The next thing after the salah is called zakah. Zakah is to pay something on your wealth. How much wealth you hold in a year's time. And then at the end of the year, whatever you didn't use, you pay a tax on that like two and a half percent to the poor and the needy. It's the same for the men as it is for the women and there's no difference. He said, okay, that makes sense. I said, but then the next one is called Ramadan. Psalm Ramadan, this is fasting. Now, again, all 30 days of the month of Ramadan, a man and a woman are not supposed to eat or drink or have intimate relations, except for the woman. In this case, the woman is excused from those same days again. So if she has six, seven, eight, or ten days, whatever it is that she's in her cycle, she just marks her calendar for those days, and then she can make up the fasting Although she doesn't have to do the salah, that she didn't make that up. But she can make up the fasting at days of the year, which are more convenient and easier. And by the way, can you imagine in the hottest time of the year, she's getting time off. And then in the winter months, she could choose, I'll take those easy days. And then we come to the one called Hajj. And Hajj, again, there's a difference between men and women. A man must make Hajj or pilgrimage once in his life when Allah makes a way for him to go. But the woman... She doesn't have to do this unless she has a man to go along with her to protect her and help her. Even if she didn't get to do Hajj, Allah could give her the reward for it. Because why? Because Allah is giving something better than equality. He's giving equity. The woman and the man are different. And Allah knows what he created. And he made this way of life, Dean of Islam, for what he created. And that's one of the beauties of Islam. Until next time, peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Islam is peace, Islam.